Hello everyone, good evening, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are. Welcome everyone to the Maryland Meditation Center. We are an online community, the space where everyone can stop by, sit back, relax, and practice meditation together. So today is Saturday 11th of February 2023. In the second week of February already, as you may know, time goes by very quickly. I don't know how have you guys been doing in the past week? How was your day today? Is there anything that you feel? very happy about it is there anything that you feel somewhat uh, worried about it okay and this is the nature of life that uh, we have to accept we have to understand and we have to find a way to deal with it and make sure that we keep our mind center and be able to stay calm when we stay calm we can give ourselves a chance to reflect on it deeper and uh, it give rise to wisdom for us how to deal with the situation that we are facing so whether you are new to the program or you are a regular participant uh, you are at the right place and at the right time for this session to sit back relax and practice meditation together so my name is venerable narong shai i'm going to be your host for tonight we'll spend about one hour and 15 minutes together in this session for the first half we will sit about 30 to 35 minutes and the second half i will give a wisdom talk uh, to share with you some wisdom that help you to meditate better that help you to live life better and at the end another 10 minutes you can ask questions you can share your experiences or anything at all that you would like to share with your friends here in these communities okay so that's the structure so we meet once a week every saturday 7 to 8 15 eastern standard time again whether you are new or you are regular participants you are always welcome and please keep coming back and learn from each other and meditate together okay and during the weekday you practice meditation by yourself and once a week you stop by and meditate with the monk and we meditate with the friends here and that help us to kind of strengthen our self-discipline and give us a chance to meet with the more mindful friends the friend who would like to support each other in the long run in this meditation journey okay so nice to have you here and i feel very happy to be back again because last week i was in malaysia to visit my monk's brothers over there and i will share with you the story of this the trip okay at the end of this after we meditate first there's a lot of things quite so many interesting things there in malay it was my first time as well to visit malaysia country and to visit two of my monks brother over there so um, i feel very grateful to be able to come back and meditate with everyone here again because so like i said there's so many things that happening in the past two weeks not only the trip but i have to rush back to thailand because my aunt just passed away and i uh, rushed back to my hometown and take care of the funeral and came back to bangkok last night and everything went okay the family wise everyone seemed to be able to understand this is the law of nature and no one can escape from dead and somehow i feel like being a monk am the center of the whole family when they have the monks at home they feel like they are safe and they are secure they feel very comfortable to have monks as a family members and that's i think the role that i never thought that i can play in my whole life so i went back home and i support them in any way I can. I give the Dhamma talk, I, I, I teach them how to meditate, to deal with sorrow, to deal with this sadness moment when someone we love pass away and this separation nobody wants to experience but we cannot escape right the law of nature so we have to find a way to live with it we have to find a way to understand so we don't overwhelm ourselves with those sorrow and sadness feeling and my sister still have a hard time to to let go of that feeling you know, that separation with uh, when someone that we really love and really care in the family have to say goodbye forever cannot meet, cannot see, cannot talk to each other again. We don't know when, but at least in this lifetime, it's just impossible to do anything after a person we love have passed away. So anyway, now I'm back. So I feel grateful for everything. That's it's morning here in Thailand. It's Sunday morning. Okay, it's Saturday over there, but it's morning here. So the moment that I wake up, I remind myself that you know what, whatever happened today, I feel very grateful for at least you know number one, I am still alive. As long as I'm sitting here talking to you, I'm still alive, right? So as long as we are still alive, there's so many things that we can do. We can keep on developing ourselves. We can study the Dharma. We can practice meditation. We can do a lot of things with, with something that we love to do, including meditation. And we can also uh, spend time with people we love. And we can also help you know, more and more people to live a better life. So there's no time to waste with the sadness, with the sorrow. Understand it, overcome it, and move on. Okay? Because life is so short. 
it is very short in this lifetime be talking about less than 100 years most of us would have to say goodbye to this world and the thing is we don't know when that is happening for sure we don't know when we don't know where we don't know how but we know for sure that is coming and that is why reflection on death is one of the meditation technique that's the buddha teach back then and that's something we may talk about it in the later session okay there are so many techniques that help us to meditate better that help us to bring the mind back to the body and keep the mind still in the body uh, so many things that we we can learn we can choose and we can experience okay and reflecting on the dead body reflecting on the daily reflection like lung pishu was talking about it last night that we subject to illness we cannot escape from illness we are subject to old age we cannot escape from getting old and we also subject to death we cannot run away or escape from death so this is the real nature of life whether we like it or not with our view doesn't matter how much we feel about it but it's the fact it's the truth that all of us have to experience okay so please feel grateful for who you are and what you do especially when you have a chance to meditate this is the only activities or the only tools that can save us you know more effectively when the time of sadness when the time of suffering that we are facing we don't know what's going to be happening but at least we can prepare our mind you know, by bringing the mind back to the body and calm the mind and purify the mind and perhaps we can find the inner peace inside our mind before we go to bed or before we move on with our day today okay so with that being said uh, let's meditate together first for the next 30 minutes and then i'll share with you something that i prepared today that help us to meditate better and to live life better okay so let's time to meditate so first thing first wherever you are you plan to sit on the floor plan to sit on the chair i like you to find the most comfortable sitting position for yourself the very most because we'll be sitting about 30 to 35 minutes this is not too long if you can find that position so you can sit you know nicely and relaxingly for the next 30 to 35 minutes without coming back and change your sitting position softly and gently close your eyes the same way you close your eyes when you go to sleep welcome your mind back to this very present moment here and now back to the room back to the breath following your breath in and out for a few times Notice how your chest is rising when you inhale and falling back down when you exhale. Notice how your belly is expanding when you inhale and contracting back down when you exhale. Feel the center of your body, the turning point between the inhales and the exhale. This is the home of the mind. Feel the sensation around your physical body, from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet. Feel the energy or the ground support underneath your bottom and your seat. Feel your clothes touch against your skin. Just observe this whole sensation of your body. Welcome the peace and relaxation. Feel grateful and appreciation for the time that you deserve to be happy, to be at peace at the end of the day like this. If you notice any stress or tension in any part of the body, take a moment to release and relax those tensions from your body. Make sure you don't squeeze your eyes too tight. There shouldn't be any stress or tensions around 
the eyes. Release the muscle around your forehead, eyebrows, your cheek, nose, your chin and your jaws. Relax. Loosen the muscle around your throat, both of your shoulders, your arms, your palms and your fingers. Relax. Relax your chest, abdomen, your back and your spine. Relaxed. Sit with your back and spine straight up. So you can sit in balance and not falling asleep. Feel the relaxation go downwardly to your bottom, your thighs your knees, four legs, both of your feet, and to the tip of your toes, relaxed. As your body becomes more relaxed, your mind tends to be more relaxed as well. Less and less thought in the mind. So take this time to slowly let go all of your worries and responsibilities. That related to your work, your study, your business, something that you plan to do. Put everything aside while we meditate. Letting go is essential when it comes to meditation. The sooner the mind can let go, the faster the mind can come back to the body and stay still. Let go everything in the past right before you come to the session. Not to worry about something in the future. Do your best to guard the mind to stay at the present moment fully. And cherish your mind with happiness and joy. Slowly disconnect yourself from the outside world. And reconnect yourself to the world of inner peace within. This meditation journey is about you getting to know the nature of your own mind and develop the quality of your own mind. Develop the inner peace, develop the wisdom. So this is the journey of your own self to go deeper into your mind. And the mind is the refined element. We cannot force the mind to stop thinking. We cannot force the mind to let go and to have peace. So we need to take a very relaxed approach, easy, soft approach when it comes to the mind.
So allow the mind to settle down into the body by itself. The place where the mind feels most comfortable and relaxed to stay still and to rest can be the center of the body, can be anywhere in the body. No need to think or analyze. Just simply follow your feeling. Wherever you feel good, feel easy, feel relaxed, and that is the place you should rest your mind. And each session is not the same. You need to ask yourself each time that you sit, What makes you feel most relaxed and comfortable? So wherever the mind feels relaxed, just let it be there. Whatever technique that the mind feels comfortable, and that's the technique that you should use in that session. So simply allow the mind to come back and stay still in the body. If you already feel relaxed and comfortable, you have found that place. And all you have to do is just let it be. Maintain the stillness of the mind with relaxation and consciousness. Stay relaxed and stay conscious. Keep the mind in balance and let it be. No need to analyze, no need to ask the question. Just be a good observer of your inner experience, of the nature of your mind. If your mind is still wandering, cannot stay still, or get distracted by thought, this is perfectly normal. No need to get agitated. No need to fight with the thought. Learn how to be friend with the thought and let the thought pass by. And eventually, you slowly welcome the mind back to the peace and relaxation feeling. Come back to the balance and start over again. Some of you may use the object to keep the mind still, such as the full moon, the star, the crystal ball, the flowers. If you feel easy and comfortable, then you can visualize the object of your choice relaxingly, peacefully. Some of you may use the mantra, the word that you're reciting during your meditation to keep the mind focused, like peace and calm. Peace and calm. Peace and calm. Or in our tradition, we use the Pali word saying Samma Arahang. Samma Arahang. Samma Arahang. Meaning the path to the purity of the mind. So whichever phrase or word that you use, just to keep the mind still. Or you may visualize nothing, no object, no mantra. Just simply allow the mind to be still by itself. Stay still, stay relaxed.
and stay content without any expectation. Just want to be still. Just want to rest. Just want to relax and let it be. So let's meditate together in silence for a moment. Do your best to stay in balance between relaxation and consciousness.
stay still, stay relaxed, and stay content. Checking into the mind to see how the mind feels at the moment. Any thoughts, feelings, sensations. Notice how peace and calm of your mind at the end of the session. Allow the peace, joy, and happiness feelings, this positive energy, to circulate throughout your physical body, penetrate to every single cell in your body. Allow the whole body to feel fresh, relaxed, recharged, and rejuvenated. Develop the feeling of love, compassion toward yourself. Learn how to forgive yourself, to let go all of the wrongdoing in the past. Loving yourself means keep yourself pure, body, speech, and mind, bit by bit little by little. Wishing yourself to be well, to be happy, to be free from suffering in the world. Share your loving kindness and compassion to everyone that you have a fond feeling with, your parents, spouse, children, friends, relatives, Wishing all of them to be well, to be happy, and to be free from all suffering and danger in the world. Continue to expand the circle of your loving kindness to your neighbor, people in your communities, people at work, at school, people that you know. You meet them regularly, but you may not know them well. Wishing all of them to be well and happy, to be free from suffering and danger in the world. Radiating your loving kindness and compassion, covering the whole communities, the whole country, neighboring country, and covering the whole world. Wishing all beings, human, animal, all the living beings, all the spirit, wishing all of them to be well, to be happy, to be comfortable, and to be free from all suffering and danger in the world. Wishing the whole world can live together in peace and harmony without war, violence, taking advantage from each other. Expanding your loving kindness and compassion as far as your mind can go, covering the whole world, the whole universe, and countless universe. If your loving kindness and compassion touch on any spirit that needs to be uplifted, any being that needs to be uplifted, wishing this pure love and compassion to help them to be well, to be happy, to be comfortable, and to be free from suffering and danger. And now allow the mind to be back to the body, to stay still and stay relaxed for a moment. 
cherish your mind with happiness and joy. Feel grateful and appreciation for this precious moment, for the time that you deserve to be at peace and happy. Now let's take a few good deep breaths before we open up our eyes. Breathe in and breathe out mindfully and slowly. Put a little smile on your face. Keep your mind stay still firmly at the center of the body. And when you are ready and relaxed, you may softly and gently open up your eyes. So welcome everyone back to the session. That was about 32 minutes. Hope everyone finds some inner peace during your meditation. So each time that you meditate, please take a moment to reflect of the technique that you use, of your experiences that happening during meditation what technique that you use, what was the result, and how do you feel at the end of the session. Please do not meditate without reflection. Okay, spend one or two minutes before you open up your eyes to check on yourself to see how you feel. If you feel happy, relaxed, content, whatever technique that you use, you, know, you most likely you practice correctly. Just continue to develop that technique. You no need to change it, okay? But if you feel opposite, you feel difficult, you feel uncomfortable, you don't feel relaxed, you don't feel good about yourself or your own practice, and that telling you that something is wrong in that session, okay? In your practice, observe it, adjust it, okay? And uh, you will find what works for you, then continue doing that, and you will be noticing that this doesn't work for me, then stop doing it. Okay, just keep it simple like that. Today, I like to share with you some of the things that I learned from the last trip that I went to Malaysia with the, to visit my monk's brother over there. And we have a chance to visit the uh, one of the biggest Mahayana Buddhism. They have the many branches worldwide and this is one of them in Malay. The temple is called Fokong Shan. The original temple is in Taiwan and then now they have many branches, maybe over 200 branches around the world under the vision of the, their master Lung Ho or the master Sing Win Tassi, Venerable Master Sing Win who just passed away on the 5th of February okay, last week at the age of the 92 or 97 I'm not sure he just passed but he has a quite unique and interesting vision okay, when he built a temple okay, to serve the whole humanities the whole mankind okay, to find the refuge where people can come back and reflect on their own life and reflect on how to live good life so he, he provide that environment okay, to come back to the minimalism detached from the material Real world and live life as simple as possible. So this is the in front of the temple and it's uh, last month it's still considered Chinese New Year. Wherever you go you may find the Chinese people they celebrating their New Year. And here is his characteristic when he built a temple. He said be compassionate, skillfully render services to others, respect people of different nationalities and focus on universality and equalities by Venerable Master Sing Win. There are many pictures of him okay, around the temple and his teaching simple and direct teaching. Not only simple direct but also very profound. A lot of things that I learned okay, from every time I have a chance to visit uh, his temple. They also have the temple in Thailand, in Japan, in many places including in Malay. And this is what he said. His philosophy of life is very simple. In the Chinese letter, as you see on the screen, translated in English as three things. That's why it's called the three goodness. Think good, say good, and do good. <laughs> very simple, right? So think good thought, say good word, and do good deeds. Very simple, three things. Maybe we can reflect from this if we want to live good life. Again, we need to look for the good teacher, right? And learn from them and apply or reflect of what we learn from them and put into practice. To me, this is a universal. 
nothing to do with religious. We want to hang around with people who have a good thought, right? Who say something good and who do something good. But the definition of thinking good, say something good and do something good may be vary from culture to culture. Today, I'd like to take a look of what it means by thinking good. What would be the framework of think good, say good, and do good through the lens of Buddhism that can help us to use as a framework and then we can put into practice. And the temple also built the university. Okay, and this university trained the young generation to understand the nature of life and to live good life. They built the new generation to be a good citizen of the world because most of the university or the college that we attend focusing on academic achievement that's come first. Academic achievement, it doesn't matter whether the graduate or people who graduate become good people, good citizens of the world or not. But they're focusing on academic or sport achievements or music or those kind of things. Not many people, not many schools keep important to the morality side of life, but only academic side when the children or people go to school. That's their main purpose to, to get to that level. Hopefully when I graduate you know, with a good score, I can find a good job, make a good living. But morality is missing and this is something very important. So the school bring back this principle. So they open up this university for the young generation where they, they grow their own vegetable, they live very simple life and they live very mindfully in the school. And this is just some of the picture that I just want to share with you. So they live life very simple, keep things very clean and very organized. When they wake up, they have to fix their bed right away for their blanket, fix the pillow, make sure it's it's look neat and it looks clean and it's look organized all the time. And their belonging is very simple, simple necessity, you know, toothbrush, toothpaste, detergents, where they do laundry, very simple. Mimics the life of the monk. <laughs> They walk to the class okay, together, male and female, very mindful. And sometimes they practice mindfulness by putting the glass on top of their head when they walk to the class. Quite interesting. And they also have a session like this with the tea session before they start the class. The, the student allowed to drink tea, fix tea and serve tea you know, mindfully. This is one way of practice mindfulness. Mindfulness should be an autopilot. If everyone can put mindfulness into practice, in every single activity, the moment that we wake up until the time that we come back to bed. This will help that person to be mindful. And when you are mindful, you will be a person who is always aware of what's going on and that helps us to make a better decision. Not only that, when we are mindful all day long of whatever we do, it helps us to meditate better. When we come home, we come to the room, we lock the door, we sit cross-legged or sit on the chair and let go the whole world. It helps the mind to stay concentrated much better and much longer. Have less wandering thought because we prepare ourselves all day long through the, to the practice, to the mindfulness practice. So let's take a look at what it means by think good, say good, and do good. Human being, we can commit action or the karma three ways. Through the way we think, through the way we say things, and through the way we do things. There are three ways. And it can be wholesome action or opposite can be an unwholesome action. You have choices that you can choose to think good, to think bad towards someone, to say good, to say bad towards someone, and to do good and to do bad towards someone. So you have completely control over your own action. But the thing that we cannot okay, have a full control of our action, sometimes we do something, we say something without, without thinking. So we, we already hurt someone's feeling already because we're not mindful enough. Our mindfulness is not strong or fast enough to catch that emotion that, oh, I am angry. They say something bad to me, I have to say something bad to them right away. And that's human instinct. But mindfulness helps us to regain the consciousness and it gives rise to understanding and and it help us to make a better choice of saying thing of doing thing when we are mindful so start from the first one what is mean by thinking good unwholesome thinking or thinking bad in the blue color okay thinking of greed thinking of ill will hatred resentment anger these are considered bad thinking right and also having a wrong view don't have the right understanding but for wholesome thinking opposite thinking of giving thinking of non-greed okay you don't Think of taking someone's stuff, something that not belong to us, right? Think of jealousy, think of hatred, okay? You have to think of something opposite. 
The opposite to ill will is loving kindness and compassion, and opposite to wrong will and right will. The reason you choose to join the session Saturday evening like this, 7 to 8, 15 p.m. every Saturday, and this is considered right view. You book your calendar, you lock your time, and then you join the session. Why? Because you want to meditate, and you know the benefit that meditation can give to your life. That is why you come and join the session or that is why you meditate on your own on a regular basis because you have the right view. Instead of you going to the movie theater, go to the restaurant, hang out with your friends as Friday night, Saturday night, you choose to come to the session and meditate. And this is considered right view, okay? And there's so many things that, that we can elaborate on the right view category. But for here, you can see the difference between unwholesome thinking and wholesome thinking. If you, today you're getting mad with some things, with someone, can you do your best to let go? at the end of the day like this before you go to bed and this is called right view this is something that everybody should practice and should develop so this is the framework of right thinking that we can put into practice what about the right saying unwholesome and wholesome as you can see the difference unskillful saying telling a lie telling saying something impolite divisive speech like break people into two groups destroy their harmony <laughs> destroy their unity and the useless speech this consider wrong or unskillful speech saying oppositely a wholesome or skillful saying we speak always speak the truth okay, say thing in the polite manner say thing that united people together not break them up and say something that that beneficial or useful so it's very simple but it's not easy to practice okay it's quite challenging right <laughs> We usually break this, we usually have unskillful or unwholesome speech all the time because our mindfulness is not enough. Like I said, if someone says something bad, we want to say something bad to them right away. So the formula when it comes to, to speech or giving speech or, or saying something is this. Not only you tell the truth, but whatever you're about to say, it should be beneficial to, the, to your listener, to the audience or to the person in front of you. And not only that, it should be the right timing to say that thing. Okay. Plus, the most important factor is you speak from your heart, your high heart, your loving kindness heart. Not speak because you want to pe people to look bad or you know, make them feel upset. If you are the boss, you need to find the right timing to correct your subordinate. They may make a mistake, they may do something bad, but if it's not the right timing, you can remind yourself, you know what, I'm going to come back to this person later on. Okay. My boss used to say when I was working, he said, if you want to correct someone, correct him privately. But if you want to press someone, you press them or press him publicly. And I think it's quite interesting, right? It, people don't want to, to look bad in the eye of public. If you want to correct them, you tell them in private. But if you see that this person doing something good, you press them in public. This is how you you give people motivation to work for you or to continue doing good things. Okay? And the last one, doing good and doing bad. This this is the framework, what it means by doing good, what it means by doing bad. Killing or harming others definitely is a bad thing, right? <laughs> Stealing stuff, you know, taking something that not belong to us, this definitely also considered bad action. And sexual misconduct, you have a relationship outside your relationship, this is considered something bad. Okay, uh, You should be honest to your spouse and uh, the, the relationship that you are in. For wholesome, again, it's opposite. Instead of killing or harming others, you develop the living kindness and compassion toward all being, toward yourself and toward people around you, including animal as well. And stealing, okay, you develop the right career. When you have the right career, you stay on that track. You, you're not trying to take something, take benefit over someone or stealing someone's stuff. And for the sense, sexual misconduct, what we can do is we develop the sense control or the self-control or the sense restraints when it's come to lust, when it's come to sexual relationships. So we need to develop that to remind ourselves to keep the mind in a wholesome state all the time. So these are the three things, say, do good, say good, and thinking good. So in this picture again, if your mind is clear and calm all the time, okay, when the source of thinking is clear, most likely your verbal action and your physical action would be wholesome automatically. The reason we say something bad or we do something bad because the source of the thinking is unclear. It's crowded, it's getting agitated by anger, by lust, by delusion. That is why we it drive that kind of unwholesome behavior to say something bad and to do something bad. And here, as you can see, meditation come to play a very important role. How can we keep the mind calm? How can we keep the mind pure? How can we keep the mind happy? 
all the time, all day long. Mindfulness and meditation, these two things, uh, please keep in mind that, uh, that it helps us okay, to maintain the quality of the mind, the good quality of the mind. Because when the source of thinking is clear, you will say something and do something from the happy mind, from the good mind. Most likely what you're about to say and what you're about to do would be wholesome, would be skillful. So meditation is very essential to life. If you want to be happy, okay, that is why we should meditate, right? If we don't meditate, we wouldn't know or have ability okay, to fully control our behavior through what we are about to say and what we are about to do. But when we meditate long enough, it helps us to understand the nature of our mind. It helps us to regain the mindfulness very quickly. And when, when mindfulness, when you are mindful, okay, most likely you would think before you say things. You would think before you do something. Okay, so these are the three things that I like to mention today about this simple life philosophy by the Venerable Master Sing Win, the abbot of the Fokong San Temple, who just passed away last week. So hope you pick up something today and perhaps you can put into practice. Okay, is there anything that upset you today? Is there anything that you feel like I shouldn't be doing that today? Is that any word that you say that hurt people feeling? or any action that you do today that you don't feel you know, happy about it. So reflect on it and come back to the reason why did you do that? What went wrong? What would be something that I can adjust or, or improve you know, tomorrow or next week or next month? Okay, so meditation help. Mindfulness also help okay, to us to regain the clarity of the mind and to regain the consciousness. When the mind is clear and when we are conscious, okay, most likely whatever we are about to say and we are about to do would be skillful and wholesome and that's we will not feel regret later on of our own action. Okay, so with that, I think it's a perfect timing for today. If you have any question, you want to share some experience, feel free to let us know in the chat box. Again, in short, think good, say good and do good okay the three goodness very simple <laughs> put into practice okay if someone say something bad do something bad to you as a meditator your job is to be able to reflect on that and be able to let go those resentment toward them okay the more you meditate the more you should be able to understand the nature of life and let go Okay, something that you're not very happy about it. Don't cling too much on the feeling or the situation that create that negative energy to your life. You know, don't keep them for long. So the more you meditate, the more you will be able to do that. But if you don't meditate at all, okay, human being, we will follow the instinct. Okay, say something bad, I'll say something bad to you. You do something bad to me, I do something bad to you. And that's what most people live their life through this instinct. Without mindfulness, it's very difficult for us to maintain a happy daily life. Okay, so practice mindfulness during the day and find time, okay, 30 minutes, one hour a day, whatever you can, whenever you can. Make sure you have that slot for your own life each day to sit and meditate on your own for at least 30 minutes a day. Some of you may sit one hour a day, you know, that's even better. Okay, but don't give up your practice. <laughs> okay, all right, so with that, I'm okay for today, you know, for what I prepare, not too long. I'll see you guys next week, okay, next Saturday. Okay, and um, thank you, Margaret, for your kind word. Okay, I will keep in mind and uh, <laughs> uh, continue to keep on coming back and uh, meditate with everyone here and uh, share something that help you to meditate better and live a better life. Okay, so life is very really short. Okay, 100 years is not long and not many people can live up to 100 years. In the past 16 years of my life being a monk, I have been to many funerals. And I noticed that not many, I have not seen anybody live up to 100. Every funeral that I went or I joined, okay, that means that number is the number that we should reflect on. Is If we're not going to live that long, how can we live the best life ever? If this is the lifetime that, if we have one life to live, we should live the best, right? <laughs> so what would be the best lifestyle that we should live on? And that's something everyone should reflect on that, okay? <laughs> okay, from Eugene, when increasing meditation time, is it normal to feel frustrated after your meditation at first? Okay, all right. So please stick with your these two princ this this principle. Okay, make sure the body relaxed, then the mind can be relaxed. You don't have to force yourself okay, to sit one or two hours. You start from 30 minutes when you feel comfortable. After one week, you feel that, hmm, I'm okay with this 30 minutes. And then the second week, you increase 10 more minutes 
from 30 to 40 minutes to see how you feel. And the reason that we feel agitated because number one, we expect something to be happening, right? You worry about the experience. You also worry about, wow, it's 40 minutes, it's long. When am I gonna finish? Can I do it? <laughs> so you worry about time. Meditation has nothing to do with timing. You sit as you feel good, okay? But if you already meditate as a routine for 30 minutes, you set alarm clock somewhere and you just let it be there for 30 minutes. When the, you hear the alarm clock, you finish and then you do your thing. But even though you sit for 30 minutes and you hear the alarm clock that wake you up, that is time 30 minutes, but you're still feeling good, you still want to continue, then continue. Don't worry about time. This feeling not happen all the time, it's not happen very often. But when you feel like you want to sit and you have time to sit, please continue to sit. Don't just leave the seat, okay? Because it's difficult for the mind to be in that stage, to be really happy, to be really at peace. Once it's happened, grab it, continue to experience it, okay? So if you feel frustrated, again, adjust. It can be happening, okay? Adjust, come back to balance between relaxation and consciousness, you know, maybe take a few good deep breaths and to continue and to see what happened. Okay, frustration is just one experience. Okay, so understand it and learn how to deal with it. All right. Okay, thank you for the question. Thank you for the sharing. <laughs> okay, so hope everyone have a good session today and uh, I'll see you, uh, see everyone again next Saturday. Stay safe, stay happy, keep on meditating, whatever happened. Okay, so have a good one, everyone. See everyone again next week.